Today is, a, is an historic occasion as we officially dedicate the University of Georgia College of Education in honor of a pioneering music educator and civil rights icon, Ms. Mary Frances Early. As president of the University of Georgia, I am thrilled and humbled to be a part of this historic moment. And I am so pleased that all of you could be here today to be a part of it as well. We are delighted to welcome home Governor Brian Kemp and First Lady Marty Kemp. Thank you for being with us today. University System of Georgia Chancellor Steve Wrigley is here, and he will be speaking later in the program. And we are glad to have current and former members of the Board of Regents joining us as well. We're also pleased to welcome members of the Georgia General Assembly, and we thank them for taking part in this event. And I am particularly excited to hear from our keynote speaker, President Marion Ross Federick, who's one of our own, of Albany State University. Thank you for coming today as well. We welcome back Ms. Marilyn Holmes, the wife of Hamilton Holmes, one of the first two students to integrate the University of Georgia. And and their son, Hamilton Holmes, Jr., is also with us today. Thank you for being here. As well as many other alumni and friends of the university, thank you for being with us. This is a wonderful day to be in Athens, Georgia, on this campus. And finally, of course, we welcome Ms. Mary Frances Early back to Athens. Thank you. To begin our program, I would like to invite Ms. Ashley Love to the podium to introduce our keynote speaker. Ashley is from Columbus, Ohio, and she is a doctoral candidate in educational theory and practice. She serves as vice president of the Graduate and Professional Scholars Organization at the University of Georgia. Please join me in welcoming Ashley. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of graduate and professional scholars at UGA, it is my privilege to introduce this afternoon's keynote speaker, President Marion Ross Federick. President Federick is a two-time graduate of the University of Georgia with a bachelor's in education and a master's degree in public administration. She is now on her way to becoming a triple dog as she pursues her doctorate in higher, the Institute of Higher Education. She has served as president of Albany State since 2018, and after serving for a year as both interim executive vice president and interim president of the university. Under her leadership, Albany State has undertaken several critical initiatives, among them a restructuring of the institution's academic colleges, approval, oh, I'm sorry, approval of the first nexus degrees in the university system of Georgia, and the design and implementation of an integrated student success model including the creation of Albany State University Summer Success Institute. Before coming to Albany State, President Frederick was, Frederick served as Vice Chancellor of Human Resources at the University System of Georgia, where she led initiatives relating to university administration, leadership development, and human resources planning. Over the course of her career, she's also led staff development efforts at Clark Atlanta University, Emory University, and Emory University Hospitals and she served in leadership roles in the Georgia Office of State Personnel Administration, AT&T, and Bell South. Please join me in welcoming this distinguished alumna of the University of Georgia, President 
Marion Ross Frederick. Wow, wow, this has been a phenomenal, phenomenal week. Um, I am excited. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, it sounds like a classroom. Thank you. <laughs> I know that everyone in this auditorium is just as excited as I am to be a part of such a historical event at the University of Georgia, the renaming of the College of Education to the Mary Frances Early College of Education. So excited. So this renaming is both monumental and historic because it recognizes the important contributions of a pioneer in the equality of education and a reminder of the significance of her achievements. But before my clock starts, I just want to ask anyone who came to the gala last night Last night's gala was absolutely fabulous. So to the organizers, thank you for that gala. It was absolutely full of love and appreciation. And I just have one comment to make, though. You invited the Honorable Michael Thurman to give the keynote last night. <clears throat> no one speaks after Mr. Thurman. There's an unspoken 30-day embargo on speaking on any topic that he has spoken on. But I'm going to try anyway today. He was wonderful, of course, last night. However, Chancellor Wrigley, nothing tops the declaration made by Mr. Lance Jackson, who I think is in the room. He's a former student of Ms. Early. He ended his reflections declaring that he loved Ms. Early more than bacon. <laughs> I'm just a phenomenally, unapologetically awesome president. Ain't no way I can touch that. <laughs> Ms. Early, you rock. I am simply overwhelmed with what you have done for me um, at the University of Georgia. So hopefully I can get through this without crying because you are looking at someone who is a direct beneficiary of what she's done. And that, to me, I can never repay you and never can tell you thank you enough. After the gala last night and all the love that was in the room, I totally understood what I wanted to be when I grow up. And that is somebody who is just filled with love like it was last night. And not just simply because of the sake of being loved, but because it will mean that I have done something as phenomenal as Miss Mary Frances Early. You did it and they actually came out to recognize last night. Miss Early, thank you for your courage and selflessness for the betterment of the entire UGA student body in 1961 and also the generations of students who are beneficiaries of that contribution even today. You're indeed our hero. President Moorhead, thank you for the invitation to speak today. You have made the complexities of making courageous decisions look simple, and I am so thankful that you are at the helm of my beloved alma mater. Dr. Steve Wrigley, thank you for being an innovative and strategically focused chancellor. You encourage all of us to lead well, and we're trying our best to lead these 26 public institutions to the best of our ability. My family, friends, and colleagues are in the audience today. Um, I want to say a special thank you to them, especially to my husband, Horace Frederick, who is a 20-year veteran of the athens Clark County Police Force right here in Athens, Georgia. My beautiful daughter, Sarah, is also in the audience. Her history professor, teacher, she's just 13, Miss Beard, assigned her the task of writing about my speech today. So Sarah was quick to advise me to be brief <laughs> and not to put anyone to sleep. <laughs> to be a part of this momentous occasion takes my breath away. I've never found myself before wishing that we had another hour in the day just so that I can reflect and be a part of what is happening here at the University of Georgia. I'm honored and humbled to be a part of this very important moment in time. So in preparation of today's events, like always, I call my mom. And I have to tell her I'm one of 10 kids, and so um, I'm also her favorite, Chancellor Wrigley. Um, <laughs> I call my mom for words of inspiration, to share my thoughts, and to talk to her about why this is such a momentous occasion. And she asked me the question, 
So what has moved you the most about Miss, Miss Early? And so there's a whole list of things that, that move me about Miss Early. I love the fact that she has tenacity, including her rejection of and ability to disrupt the status quo, her willingness to do the unthinkable, willingness to be a de facto emissary for the marginalized and the voiceless, and her willingness to place herself in the eye of the storm, the storm that was taking place throughout the United States, the civil rights movement. I encountered the story of Ms. Early and how she watched the news of the riot that ensued, and she decided that she needed to come to Athens and help Ms. Hunter and Mr. Holmes because, as she said, they can't do that to those young people and she needed to come and help desegregate, desegregate UGA. At that moment, perhaps a defining motive, moment for Miss Early, and certainly for those who would come behind her, she decided that she would come on and come to Athens. My mom responded with the same phrase that I've heard her say many times. Miss Early, this is not about you. But my mother said, sane people run away from the storm. <laughs> but God's angels run into the storm, and that is certainly about you. Thank you. She said it's no fun just being sane. She reminded, that, she reminded me that people don't run into storms for the glory of the recognition, but because that would be meaningless. Instead, they run into the storm to save someone or something else. They are okay with perishing as long as they know that they have tried their level-headed best to do what needed to be done to make change. The lessons that I've learned from Ms. Early are enormous, but can be summarized in these words. The words are heroine and hero, selflessness through servant leadership, persistence and grace. For me, hero describes who she is. While a servant leader, while serving, his, well, while serving as a servant leader, she serves with grace and persistence. That's how I would describe her. Now, y'all have to remember I'm an HR person. I'm an HR person, so I put everything in the job description. <laughs> For me, hero and heroine describes who she is, while servant leader, grace and persistence describes how she did it and how she leads. She is a hero. Ms. Early recognized the need and heeded the call to serve. She put others before her and decided to transfer from the University of Michigan to the University of Georgia to help her former high school colleagues achieve something for the greater good of society. Throughout the ordeal, she maintained her composure in public and conquered the challenge with grace and a solid power from which we all should learn. Ms. Early embodies all of the characteristics of a graceful servant leader and a true hero. Christopher, Christopher Reeve said it best, a hero is an ordinary individual who feels the strength to, to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. How befitting that a former actor who played Superman in the movies like Christopher Reeves would recognize that it takes a hero just to be a hero. Now I was a strange kid, so my screen heroes were Bugs Bunny and the Road Runner. It brings back fond, fond memories from my childhood and even through my superhero days. During the summer and other days, when we would finish our chores, my brothers and I would make sure we got the opportunity to pull out our towels, tie them around our neck, and play superhero, jumping from sofa to chair to table, being a hero. I always ask my mom why she didn't get on us. Our parents were very strict. And she would say, you know what? You all are building your imaginations. If you build your imagination the right way, you can be whoever you want to be when you get older. So keep jumping from chair to chair. I always think of Miss Early as one of those, of those heroes with her, her towel tied around her neck. It probably would have been a really pretty scarf, but, <laughs> but the towel tied around her neck, being a hero, running in front of the problems, running into the storm. Be the change you want to be. We must all be committed to leading like a hero and be the change you want to see. We must consider our steps carefully, determine what storms we will run into, and powerfully and proudly 
wrap your towels around your neck, and run into that storm. And Miss Early did just that. Her steps were ordered, and she followed them. Mr. Thurman spoke last night about what ifs. What if she had decided not to come? What if she decided not to intervene? Frankly, I don't think that was an option. God had already placed this journey on her heart, and she had to fulfill that journey. Miss Early took a leap of faith and changed the trajectory of her life to improve the lives of others. She ran into the storm. I know that her bravery improved my life. It is personal. <laughs> like many of you, I'm a beneficiary. I wouldn't be the president of an awesome university if she had not made the sacrifice. She blazed the path so that I could attend UGA. Yes, it is personal. At times when I doubt that I could be a hero or that I could lead the way I need to lead, I pretend that she sacrificed, that she ran into the storm just for me. It gives me motivation to keep moving forward. What is your motivation? What storms are brewing in your life that only you have the power to weather? We must be willing to run into the storm. Here's a fact of the matter. If you're a student at UGA, Albany State, or any university, you received an acceptance letter, and that acceptance letter represents years of hard work and perseverance. What is nowadays called grit is resilience. It's the resilience that you had since you started. It's the resilience, resilience you had before you, got, before you got here. Please know you are already a hero. Your enrollment in an institution of higher education is just a culminating act on your journey to greatness. Students, embrace your heroic nature and walk in your destiny. Just like Mary Frances Early, someone is looking for you to lead them, to help them be successful. If you are a sibling, or if you have a sibling, a cousin, a niece, if you have a pet, you must lead like a hero. Miss Early has already set the bar, just reach for it. Be a trailblazer, because there is not an option to do anything different. Leading like a hero is hard, it is scary, and yes, some days it is downright paralyzing. But you have to do it, you have to lead, you have to wanna lead. It is what we are here to do. Again, it's personal for me, because when I was here at UGA, I didn't think of myself as a leader. I only saw the struggle. I was working two full-time jobs and a part-time job at DuPont every weekend. School, work, test, they were second to me surviving. I didn't have a lot of time for socializing, so it was work, dorm, class. That was my routine. Now, if y'all talk to any of the students I went to school with, they may tell you that I went to every party and every game. <laughs> but that was the first quarter of my freshman year, and I swear I got better. Um, <laughs> Because had I not, the storm would have been a different storm had I flunked out of UGA. And that just wasn't an option for me. Back then, I didn't know how to be a student. So being a leader didn't cross my mind until I left UGA. More recently, being at Albany State's campus, when I get the opportunity to talk to and engage with so many students, both from the high schools around, the middle schools, our college students, I feel differently. You know you must lead differently when you have a student to walk up to you giddy and gushing because you are a female president. It gets even more impactful that you are a black female president. Heck, I gush with you. I share my journey with them. I need them to know that I didn't do it by myself that we are here for them, and that we can help them, and that that is our purpose. Because I want them to realize that it's their purpose as well. We can't come with our hands out. We gotta come with our hands out to help somebody and pull somebody else along. Just a few weeks ago, my vice president and I were talking about how do we help. Every time I think about next step, I always go big. I'm thinking, how many people can I help? What can I do? How can I change the world? And sometimes it paralyzes me. And my vice president, uh, Kenyatta Johnson, she's our vice president of enrollment and student, of, student um, success. 
she kind of looked at me and she gave me the evil eye. You know how your kids look at you with the side eye and you know, thinking, hey, you can, you can do this. But she looked at me with that evil eye and said, just do something. You don't have to help everyone. You don't have to help 10,000. You, you just need to help one. Start somewhere. Where are y'all gonna start? We all have to start. We all have something that we can give back. And it's not an option not to do it. So after she fusses at me, and Chancellor and, and President Moorhead, I think it's a blessing that my cabinet feels the need that be, to be compelled to yell at me every now and then. Um, because most of the time, they're right. They're right, and I need to do something differently. So we decided that day that I would actually institute scholarships for students who were coming from my high school in Augusta, Georgia, Lucy C. Laney High School. Go Wildcats. <laughs> Go Wildcats. Um, because I know where those students are coming from. I know their backgrounds. I know what they have and don't have. I know the struggle. I know once they hit campus, they don't know whether or not they can make it. They don't know yet how to be strong to get through college, but they will. We'll get them there. So what I've decided is that at least for the next five years, that I would award five scholarships probably every semester to students who are coming from that school. Now they have to come to ASU, so they're gonna have to come to Albany State but that's gonna be my contribution back to my city and to my school. And I hope everyone in this room can see fit to do at least that for the students in their high school. <laughs> if you don't want to do money, please share your time and your treasure. Um, go to your school and see what needs to happen because we can actually use the help. Next month, ASU will celebrate the naming of our student center. With the support of, the Chancellor, of Chancellor Wrigley and the Board of Regents, I have the opportunity to name a building after a legendary figure who benefited, who dedicated his time and talent and treasure to Albany State University. Dr. C.W. Grant, who was ASU's long-term Vice President for Student Affairs, had many famous quotes, but this is the one that I consider his call to action. If not here, where? If not you, who? If it is to be, it is up to me. That was his call to action to tell us at Albany State, what are you going to do to help the students at Albany State? I consider Ms. Early's call to action in a very similar light. Now that she has laid the groundwork, we have to continue clearing the path. Make your own path if needed. Ms. Early blazed the trail not only to follow, but to build upon in new and different ways. In his early words, we have to activate ourselves and take on the responsibility to make this the world, to make this world the place it can be. Mary Frances Early. Be a servant. Everybody can be great because everybody can serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Now, I took out the sections where he says you didn't have to go to college, because I thought that wouldn't be appropriate for right now. <laughs> but everyone can serve, and everyone can be great. It doesn't take a lot. Somebody is looking up to you. Somebody needs you to help. You only need to have a full heart, like we saw last night at the gala. Have love and get started. Some of the characteristics, like a hero, are selflessness. In, per in persistence. These are servant leaders. Servant leaders are critical to building the communities that we need for the future. Some of the characteristics that you will see from a servant leader like Miss Early are the abilities to listen, be empathetic, have foresight and commitment to people and to the community. Miss Early was at home safe and secure and unharmed when she watched the riots on TV. She listened with her heart. She was concerned about her former high school classmates. She showed empathy. She knew she had to help to make the change a reality. She used foresight to envision the future. Without a doubt, she's a servant leader. She decided to leave the University of Michigan to come to Athens to help the cause for desegregation. She was building a community. 
There are multiple opportunities to invest in change that is important to you. If they're not important to you, find what is and invest in that change. Higher education needs the change. As higher education leaders, we must work on graduating more students. We must make sure that they have the resources that they need to get through college. There are always obstacles and storms brewing in this, in this journey that every student must face. We must work on efficiencies so that students can afford to go to college. Even when accepted, some students are not able to attend college. I was close to one of those students. There are many reasons why students can't attend or stop out once they get started. Some of those things are financial considerations, a sense of not belonging, sense of isolation, homesickness, and being academically underprepared. We can positively impact each and every one of those obstacles. We can help our students be successful. If you are affiliated with this university in any way, I hope you feel obligated to make sure that they are successful and to make sure that you want to make it a priority. One of the strategic priorities of the University System of Georgia is affordability. As servant leaders, we need to build efficiencies into our organizations by sharing our time, talent, and treasure. Another issue that is dear to my heart is the need to help our students from a mental health standpoint. Last year, the Chancellor charged the USG Mental Health Task Force to evaluate the experiences of USG students and recommend solutions to barriers to care. Please check on your students. Check on a student. Check on any student. They need to hear your voice and they need to have your support. Ask them how they are doing. Yes, they're young adults, but remember they're living a different life than when they were in high school. Loneliness, homelessness, fear of failure, being overwhelmed by their coursework, test anxiety, all of that can send a student spiraling out of control. That is a harmful path that we don't want any of our students on. Please don't let them weather the storm alone. You can positively impact them in so many different ways. You can start a scholarship, mentor students, stand in for advocacy, hire an intern, sponsor a student group, Whatever you think is important, please do it. Wherever your passion is, follow the passion. If you don't have a passion, come on campus one day, you'll figure it out. <laughs> if you know there are students who need to find their path, help them find their path. As a servant leader, you will share what you have and what you know with the students on campus. And that is absolutely any campus. And every campus is in need. And every campus has the same issues. Maybe the different intensity, but we all have the same issues. You need to place the needs of others in front of you. That is what a servant leader does and will always do. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The greatest among you shall be your servant, Matthew 23, 11. Leading with grace. Miss Early is the most grace-filled person that I have ever met. I'm not quite sure if she's ever used a word of profanity. I know I have not. <laughs> not out loud. Oh, the lightning can't come through the building. But she must lead, and we must lead, with grace and persistence. I can relate to Ms. Early's reaction to the events taking place here in 1961. She knew that she had to come and do something. And I had a very similar reaction when I watched the footage from Hurricane Katrina. My then employer, Bell South, I asked to be deployed to Louisiana. I just felt that I need to go and I needed to help, knowing that there wouldn't be food, water, didn't know what, frankly, we were gonna find. But my assignment only lasted four weeks. Other assignments, like Ms. Early's, lasted a whole lot longer. When I got there, I was welcome, welcomed in Louisiana, even with people who had nothing, had actually lost everything. But I requested that assignment, I moved, and I did what we needed to do, just as Ms. Early did. 
Unfortunately, Ms. Early was not welcomed on this campus. She was not welcomed, she was ridiculed, she actually was told to leave, I can't tell you how many times, but she didn't. She persevered because she was more concerned about the safety of Ms. Hunter and Mr. Holmes than she was about herself. So no one can fully relate to how she felt during that first summer. So take a, po a moment and help me paint this picture. Think about being alone, only with your thoughts, being ridiculed, questioned, and maybe even a little, a little scared, but you still are determined to succeed. Because frankly, there shouldn't be any other option other than success when you're helping other people. If you've had any measure of success, you should feel obligated to give back and help others to weather the storm. While some couldn't empathize with her, she was apt at empathizing with others. She arrived at UGA in the summertime, at which time Ms. Hunter and Mr. Holmes had left campus for their summer assignments. She was here, the only student who looked like her on campus, and as I listened to the interviews of Ms. Early, it struck me that she also assumed that others were gonna be good here. I think she assumed that people would do right by her here on campus. She didn't understand why others weren't being that way. Even with faced with circumstances and poor behaviors, she still assumed and gave others the benefit of the, of the doubt. She was surprised that students didn't want to attend class with her, eat with her in the cafeteria, or study with her. She endured the ridicule and then the loneliness, and she did that for you and for me, and the thousands of other students who looked like me who attended and will attend UGA. Ms. Early persevered through the storm. She did this with, a, with quite a lot of grace and persistence that probably concerned people more than you think. You want to know what people are thinking, especially when they're there to disrupt the status quo. You don't want them to be quiet. They baited her, throwing rocks, moving away from her. When she sat in class, she remained unmoved. You have to remain unmoved. You have to get through the storm. Now I will say after meeting Ms. Early, I tweaked my speech just a little bit. While she is certainly graceful with a gentle spirit, there is so much more. In one interview, she retells a story of how a fellow student decided to throw a pebble at her one evening as she approached the library. She then proceeds to do exactly what, what, what I would have done. She picked up a rock and threw it back. <laughs> Where we differ is I probably would have picked up the biggest rock to throw it back, but I'm working on that. She said she wasn't that nonviolent to let that pass. We should all be nonviolent though. It takes that in order to get through. I bet the rock throwing ceased immediately because see, when you are serious about what you are doing, when you mean business, you can do it with grace and persevere. People tend to stop and take note when you approach them in a way that they don't expect you to approach them. I think one of the superpowers that many of us have is the power to be underestimated. And that's okay. Because when you're un un underestimated, you can come at people different ways to be successful. It doesn't always take the loudest person in the room to get something done. You can, did it, you can get it done with a quiet voice, a strong character, and the desire to keep going and just make it happen. Ms. Mary Francis Early lifted a whole generation with her actions. She made sure that all of us could attend UGA, and not just UGA, but any other school that had yet to desegregate. There were generations of students not just the students from 1961, but students from that day forward that have benefited from the sacrifice that she did. As I close, I must say again that each of us has a responsibility to do something in support of another person. There are no excuses good enough not to help. Pick your passion, help someone else to pick their passion, and set forth to change the world. Take on the storm. Everyone in this room is a superhero. You're a superhero to someone, whether you know it or not, or even whether you believe it or not. 
You could not have convinced me that I was a superhero while I was attending UGA. Not until my younger sister told me how much she looked up to me. She thought I was courageous for attending UGA. Even though my parents couldn't help me financially, I stayed and I figured out how to make it work. She says, she said, and I quote, I just knew that you would, that you would get tired of the struggle and come home. But when you didn't, I figured I had to strive just as hard because I didn't want to hear your mouth. <laughs> so maybe nagging is one of my super strengths. I know I have a lot of relatives and colleagues that would, would agree with that. But please, go ahead and nag someone if you think it would help them to be better. Heck, it's easier to be a bother to people now. You can just text them. <laughs> Hit them up on Facebook or Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and a host of other apps that I do not know how to use. But never stop encouraging them. Help them get through the storm. And we still have a lot of storms to go. We need to help our students get through those battles. We need to make sure that what they need, that we can provide. Because I guarantee you, if you're in this room, you have something that a student can use. If not this school, then another. Please keep looking out for it. Miss Early is a quiet storm, and that's perfect. Based on Alan Greenspan's work on servant leadership, the best leaders are those that people hardly know exist. The best leaders value their words and use them sparingly. As for me, you can tell from the dates listed in the program that I took my absolute time getting my degrees. And I'm back yet for another one. My purpose for mentioning that is mostly for our students. Because I want you to realize that when you get filled, when you think you can't, you need to understand that somebody already has that you can do it. it is, it's not easy, but you can do it. And I want you to keep trying and keep struggling because that struggle gets you persistence. It'll get you resilience and it'll get you to the end goal. We all have to be about how we help them through the storm. Work on being resi resilient because it definitely does take work. Know that there are others that are waiting to help you you do not have to go it alone. If you want or need help, we're here to help you weather that storm. You, uh, you may ask what made Ms. Early so different almost 60 years ago. At that time, I think she planted her feet, squared her shoulders, and decided that she would not be moved. She led like a hero, as a servant leader, with grace and persistence. And you all can do the same. To those who keep our history alive, like Dr. Maurice Daniels, thank you for reintroducing Miss Mary Frances Early to the University of Georgia and to the world. Thank you to the heroes and heroines like Mary Frances Early, who gave their all so that students like me and students at Albany State and UGA can envision their futures without boundaries. As a servant leader, I encourage all students to, to write down their history. After all, it may take us a while to recognize the history that is being made, but history is indeed being made every single day. We have to own our narrative, own our story, write about who we are, and continue to write about who we are that is the only way we will have a record for our own kids so that they know they came from greatness. Congratulations, Ms. Early. Thank you for being a trailblazer. And thank you to my, my alma mater for recognizing her greatness. But above, all, but above all else, thank you, Ms. Early Francis, for having the courage, foresight, love to run into the storm for all of us. We love you and will always honor you for the change that you have made in our lives. A job well done. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this historical day. I love you more than bacon. <laughs> and go dogs. Thank you.
Marion, you made all of your fellow UGA graduates very proud today. Thank you so much. Now it brings me great pleasure as we transition to the second portion of our program to reflect on Mary Frances Early's life and career, much of which you have heard and what she means to the University of Georgia. As you may know, Miss Early began her professional career as a music teacher at John Hope Elementary School in Atlanta, Georgia, after completing her degree in music education at Clark College, now known as Clark Atlanta University. The following summer, she began working on her graduate degree at the University of Michigan, and as you just heard, she decided in 1961 to transfer to the University of Georgia and become the first African-American graduate student she felt compelled to play an active role in the civil rights movement by joining Charlene and Hamilton as they faced a highly publicized and very challenging situation here on campus. In 1962, she graduated with a master's degree in music education and became the first African-American student to receive a degree from the University of Georgia. Afterward, Miss Early held a number of prominent roles in her field, including Director of Music for the Atlanta Public Schools, Chair of the Music Department at Clark Atlanta University, and the first African American President of the Georgia Music Educators Association. Here at the University of Georgia, Miss Early has served on the UGA Alumni Board of Directors, the Graduate School Advancement Board, and the College of Education Board of Visitors. Additionally, she served as the speaker for the graduate commencement ceremony in 2007, and in 2013, she was ordered, uh, honored with an honorary Doctor of Laws degree from our university. Two years ago, I had the privilege of awarding Miss Early the President's Medal for her numerous contributions to the University of Georgia, and I continue to be so appreciative of her friendship and her unwavering support of this great university. With her historic legacy, it is fitting that Miss Early is making history once again as the first African American to have a college or school named after them at the University of Georgia. Please join me in congratulating Ms. Early on this remarkable honor. The University System Board of Regents approved the naming of the Mary Francis Early College of Education on October 16. Here with us to speak on behalf of the University System is Chancellor Steve Wrigley. Chancellor Wrigley has spent his life in service to this great state. From Chief of Staff to Governor Zell Miller to his many leadership roles at UGA and the University System, Chancellor Wrigley has provided critical leadership for our state and the university system of Georgia. He now oversees 26 public colleges and universities with a $9.6 billion annual budget, more than 48,000 faculty and staff, and 333,000 students. It is an honor to welcome back a wonderful friend of this institution, Please join me in welcoming Chancellor Wrigley. Good afternoon. Thank you, President Moorhead, and thank you for the great job that um, you are doing at this, this great university, and I appreciate your, your friendship. Uh, Governor and First Lady Kemp, thank you all for being here. You must have eight million other things on your plate, so we really appreciate you making time to be here this, this afternoon. 
There are several members of the board who have been part of this today. We appreciate them being here. Of course, uh, President Frederick, uh, my dear friend, you know, it's, it's not hard to follow her as a speaker. She talked about Mike Thurman, but she's not easy to follow. She likes to tell people she's my favorite president. <laughs> I want to get let you in on a secret. She and President Moorhead are my favorite two presidents. <laughs> My congratulations to Mary Frances Early for your courage, your passion, and your determination to do, in your own words, quote, something instead of just stand on the sidelines. And you did more than something. You have achieved a lot, and you have changed many, many lives. And not everyone can say that. So in naming this college, the Mary Frances Early College of Education, we attempt in a small way to recognize your many contributions to our state. You all know that Ms. Early is a music educator and a distinguished one. Teaching is the most vital profession of a civil society. And civil society is impossible without educators such as Ms. Early, who share the joy of learning with others, who inspire the quest for knowledge, and who live a life of service. Ms. Early, I confess that I envy anyone with musical ability. My only musical skill is listening. <laughs> I cannot play an instrument, and I have a voice meant for the silent movie era. <laughs> Ms. Early has said that, quote, music is not a frill, but a necessary component of a well-rounded education. As a universal language, Music will follow students throughout their lifetime because it defines all cultures, end quote. That came to life for me as an undergraduate in a music appreciation course at Georgia State University. Because of that music educator, Governor, I understand what a tone poem is <laughs> and how Beethoven used rising and falling intonation in the Fifth Symphony to create and resolve the tension that marks that great composition. Ms. Early is right about music education, and to this day, I remain grateful for that class. Music education is as essential to learning as math, reading, and science. It helps develop the skills we all need to succeed in life. Things like critical thinking, creative collaboration, and effective communication. Mary Frances Early used her love of music her way to make change, both in the classroom and in history when, as you've heard, she transferred from the University of Michigan to the University of Georgia to obtain her master's degree. She did so after learning of the violence at UGA sparked by the enrolling of her two friends, Charlene Hunter and Hamilton Holmes, trying to integrate this university. Now that's courage, running toward conflict to make positive change rather than running the other way. Desegregating this university and becoming the first African American to graduate UGA in 1962 are partly the milestones we celebrate today. But do not forget the sacrifice and tenacity that it took. We live in a loud age, an age of immediacy. This powerful and purposeful woman shows us how to make a real difference in society with determination and discipline. Mary Frances Early's path is a study in equality, yes, but also a lesson in the true meaning of courage. She's a role model for everyone from President Frederick to a little girl somewhere in Georgia who has just learned to play an instrument. My daughter played the saxophone and the sousaphone in the Red Coat Band. And as she lives her life, anything like Mary Frances Early lives hers, she will have achieved something indeed. Ms. Early, thank you on behalf of the 333,000 students in the University System of Georgia. We are grateful to you for the opportunities you made possible for them and for your example of courage. We honor your service. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Denise Spangler, and I have the honor of representing the 4,000 students, 200 faculty, 150 staff members, and 60,000 alumni 
as Dean of the Mary Frances Early College of Education. The first pillar of the strategic plan for our college is to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion for all people by creating a culture of dignity and respect and by weaving attention to these issues into our teaching, research, and service. Ms. Early serves as a wonderful example of these values, as exemplified by her actions as a civil rights leader in the 1960s, the 40 years she spent as a teacher advocating for all students to have access to high quality music education, and her continued generous support of the University of Georgia, particularly of our students. Having her name on our college forevermore will remind us and all who follow us of the standards we are committed to uphold. During her 2007 commencement address, Ms. Early said, you will need roots to connect you to the past and wings to carry you into the future. Naming the College of Education for Mary Frances Early serves as the roots to connect us to the past, and her example of courage, generosity, humility, and commitment are the wings that carry us into the future a future in which public higher education is for everyone. Alongside the effort to name the College of Education for Mary Frances Early has been a fundraising campaign that will allow us to honor Ms. Early's legacy in perpetuity in multiple ways. President Moorhead and the UGA Foundation made the first gift of $400,000 to endow four Georgia Commitment Scholarships for students in education or music education. Georgia Power and Southern Company donated $500,000, which will allow us to upgrade the Mary Frances Early Professorship to a distinguished professorship pending Board of Regents approval. No pressure. <laughs> a portion of the funds raised have been used to permanently endow the Mary Frances Early Scholarship that was started by the graduate and professional scholars. And additional funds raised in this campaign will be used for scholarships for students who, like Ms. Early, are committed to issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and to support programming both in the college and at the university around these issues so that we never forget our past. Thanks to nearly 900 donors, we have raised $3 million for these important causes. It has been my incredible good fortune to get to know Ms. Early over these last few years, and I am honored that her college bears our name. As Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. I am personally committed to making sure that we uphold the values that Ms. Early has demonstrated and that we continue to strive every day to make the Mary Frances Early College of Education at the University of Georgia a welcoming and inclusive community in which to get an education. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to Ms. Zoe Willingham, who will perform a piece by Johann Sebastian Bach. Zoe is a 12th grade violinist from the Martha Ellen Stilwell School of the Arts in Clayton County, and is a fellow in the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra's Talent Development Program, which Mary Frances Early helped to found. She will be traveling to New York City to perform at Carnegie Hall in April. Please join me in welcoming her. Thank you. 
Thank you, Zoe, and safe travels to New York. <laughs> now I would like to invite Ms. Early, Governor Kemp, our First Lady, Chancellor Wrigley, and Dean Spangler to join me on the stage to officially dedicate the Mary Frances Early College of Education. I will read to you some of the language on the plaque that we are about to unveil. The plaque will be permanently displayed in Adderhold Hall, and it says the following. University of Georgia, Mary Frances Early College of Education, in recognition of Mary Frances Early, the first African-American graduate of the University of Georgia, and in honor of her groundbreaking courage and her commitment to serving as a passionate advocate for music education.
to President Moorhead, President Frederick, Governor and First Lady of Georgia. I can't really tell you how I feel because this has been a wonderful, magical time for me. I guess I really wasn't prepared for all of the things that have and are happening. And just to look at this crowd, a really diverse crowd, this is why I came. I think about a poem that I like. It's called The Road Not Taken. It's by Robert Frost, and he wrote it 20 years before I was born. And I'm trying to remember it correctly. He said, or he wrote, I shall be telling you this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. You see, we all have choices to make. My choice was not the easy road or the well-known road of going back to the University of Michigan, which I had enjoyed for two summers. And one summer before, in Interlochen, which was a national music camp, I chose to take the road less traveled by because I saw a need to do something, as has been said. There are Turner High graduates here, I think. Any Turner High people, raise your hands. Okay. <laughs> Turner Hall is now closed as a school. But our alumni, we meet each year. We have a scholarship breakfast where we give, even though as a school is closed, we give scholarships to students, high school students. Students like Zoe. Isn't she amazing? <laughs> For her to have that amount of musicianship in the 12th grade, can you imagine what will happen when she has finished the course in the Curtis School of Music or Juilliard or wherever she plans to go? I wish you well, Zoe, because you are a true musician, even at such an early age. But we have choices to make, and I want you to know that when I chose to join my Turner High graduate, uh, well, students, former students, I I wasn't trying to be the first to get a degree. They had opened the door for the undergraduates. I wanted to open the door at the University of Georgia for graduate students like me. Because we were encouraged to go out of state and to get degrees in the North and West. They gave us stipends called grant in aid. And that was going, I, I love the University of Michigan, but why should I have to go that far to get the same degree that I could get right here? And so I said, I have a right to go. And so I did. But I made that choice knowing full well that whatever happened, I would have to pay the consequence because nobody asked me to go. My mother begged me not to go. She was one of those same people who said, you must be crazy. <laughs> she said, you just saw a riot. Why would you want to go? And I said, mother, this is something I have to do. I can't march on the picket lines, didn't want to anyway, but I had to make a contribution to help make our nation better, our state better. And the thing I knew I could do was to go to school. And so I did. And it wasn't pleasant. I thought that graduate students would be more mature, you know? <laughs> I thought they're gonna accept me okay. They didn't, but it's okay because I made that choice. I was self-selected. And so what I did, I did for love, for graduate students to follow. And now they have. 
we have grad many graduate students and it warms my heart to hear people say thanks for paving the way that is the best thing anyone can say to me it's worth more than gold in fort knox but i want you to know that, that there are some people i can't I, i'm not going to try to introduce anybody but i have my family here i have former students any former students would you please stand i met two just a few minutes ago Those former students gave me the courage to do what I did. They also gave me the courage to continue in music education because it is important. Education, to me, is the most important thing that we can do. We will always need good educators. And to have the College of Education named in my honor is the, I, I can't even describe it. It's a wonderful honor. And it means that after I'm dead and gone, it will still be there. So that makes it even more worthwhile. And I want to thank all those people who had a hand in making this happen. They worked hard for several months. And if you haven't seen the outside and the interior of the College of Education, which isn't too far from here, please go by and see it. Because I saw it this morning and I tell you, I was blown away. It was wonderful. But thank all of you for being here. Thank you for being my friend because all of you are. Thank you very much.